So um, many, many sermons I've used the example of of sports, and I, I know it doesn't reflect on everybody, but I wanted to talk about a couple of scenarios um, where we might hear a plan and we're just not quite sure about it. We kind of go, uh, I don't, I don't know if I buy into that plan. You know, when you're when you're in the sports and you watch baseball or football and you hear the refill word, this is a word that scares every fan because they're like, we have to go through a bunch of losing seasons in order to become good again. And I'm sure some of you that are in the arts, whether you did a play or maybe you had a um, choir director or an orchestra that when you're going through everything that you're going to do, you kind of go, I don't know if that's going to work, but I trust the person that I'm, I'm, I'm that's leading me. So I'm going to just kind of go with it. Today we talk a lot about the shepherd. Second Samuel 7, 8 says, So then say this to my servant David. This is what the Lord of heavenly forces say. I took you from the pastor from the following the flock to be leader over my people of Israel. You see, sheep become lost very easily. And once they're lost, they're defenseless to the other animals. You can look at it being the same way with us believers. If we become lost and stray away from, from Christ and what we believe, we can get sucked into some things that we wouldn't normally be part of because we lost our focus on the shepherd. The shepherd is diligent, always thinking about his sheep and his flock. His job is to feed keep them safe, make sure that they have something to drink. His job is to take care of that flock. Now, if by chance a sheep strays off, that shepherd is responsible to find that lost sheep and to bring it back to the flock. This is something that you, you can look at it from the shepherd and, and the sheep point of view, or you can look at it as people who get lost from God, like we I talked about earlier. The people that stray away and they, and they might not feel as on fire for God as they used to. You see, God is our shepherd. That shepherd, as our shepherd, he is constantly coming to find us. But the catch for us is always whether or not we go back with him or not. He can look, he can find us, and we know that we need to go back with him, but it's up to us whether or not we do or not. So we have to always think about how this is a relationship where he looks for us, he finds us, and it's up to us to say I'm found and go with him back to the flock. Let us pray. Lord, as we read the scriptures and talk more about um, you being our shepherd, we ask you that you are just here with us and we let your spirit be here. Um, we welcome it. We hope that it's here. And uh, when we know it's here, we just ask that you let it work through the sanctuary, through the hearts and minds of everyone that is, is hearing this message. So the first scripture that I want to look at is John. Uh, it is John 10, 22 through 30. The time came for the festival of dedication in Jerusalem. It was winter, and Jesus was in the temple. Walking in the covered porch named for Solomon, the Jewish opposition circled around him and asked, how long will you test our patience? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered, 
I have told you, but you don't believe me. The works I do in my Father's name testify about me, but you don't believe because you don't uh, you don't belong to my uh, my sheep. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life. They will never die, and no one will snatch them from my hand. My Father, who has given them to me, is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them from my Father's hand. I and the, and the Father are one. So we hear about how the people that don't believe in what Christ is doing is not part of the flock. But those that believe and are part of the flock will never be will never leave the side of God. So it's believing is a huge thing. And it's not just the fact that you believe, it's what we do with it in our actions to Get that love back into the world. So when I hear this, this scripture from John, it, it's, it makes me think about the people that don't believe. Why don't they believe? Have they never experienced it? Is it their egos? Or maybe they believe, but they want the power and they don't want to give it up. Jesus. There could be many reasons why they don't believe. But the main thing is, the people that do believe is part of Jesus' flock. So, I'm going to be daring today because the video that I'm going to use, um, I, I'm going to have to, I apologize in advance. There is a few, if there's such a thing, minor cuss words in it that I'm going to try to cut out in here. It is nothing that any of us have never said before. So um, I'm going to do my best to start it off where I need to, so that way you don't have to hear it it's to me. It's really not part of the story. But after we see this clip, we're going to talk more about the shepherd.
So I thought about this clip because how many times have we have we been in that position? If you guys didn't know, that's what you guys did in some dance kid. Um, I would hope that you guys know it's a classic, but um, but they're being chased. They're being chased because they're wanted, and they get pinned down, and they have three choices to make. They can fight, they can give in and surrender, or they can take a leap of faith. It made me think about the shepherd, because so many times we are in that position in our life where those are the three options that we have. Whether or not we're in a situation to where we want to fight through it, most of the time when we fight through it, we're on our own. We're the only one fighting through it. And that's usually by choice because we don't involve God in that fight. And there's giving up. And that's something that I don't think, well, I know that God would never want us to do is to give up. So that leaves us with the last the last option, and that is that leap of faith. That we don't want to fight, we don't want to give up. So guess what? We're jumping and we're gonna trust God to catch us. Now I'm not one to talk about old memories. I think whatever I think water underneath the bridge should be left underneath the bridge. But see, here's the thing that I want all of you to remember each time I have an opportunity to talk about it and use it in the strength that I know that this church has. You all have already taken the leap of faith. Now, I'm not talking about being Christian. I'm talking about uprooting your church home coming to a new place and understanding things are going to be different and then you throw COVID into that mix. See, the leap of faith that you took, folks, you're sitting here. So what does that tell you? God caught us. We jumped, God caught us, and here we are. So what do we do with it? It's a question I ask all of you a lot. What do we do with it? We jumped. We know God caught us. We know that that, that God is there with us. What do we do with that story? And something I noticed last night when I watched this video was you might be sitting next to somebody who is a non-believer or somebody who is on the fence as far as their faith goes. And you might say, let's jump. And they go, I'm not jumping, I can't swim. It's our job to teach them how to swim. It's our job to jump with them in that leap of faith and say, we're here with you. We're going to be with you when God catches you. Whether you can swim or not, we're going to keep you above water. Now, the other scripture for today is a scripture that as as I was growing up, I remember reading, and to me, it was the the funeral scripture, Psalm 23. It was the scripture that everybody read when somebody passed. But then a few years ago, I was in a class, and they said, no, you can read that it's a great scripture to read at a time of loss. But if you actually read it and listen to it, it is a scripture of promise. It is a scripture of saying that our, our shepherd will be there and give us our daily needs. He will be there to make our cup overflow. And then we have to remember that there's a difference between what we need and what we want. Because what we want, we might not need. So 
we can't get our focus on what we want when God didn't give it to us. So therefore, he didn't answer our prayers. Maybe we just didn't need it. So he gives us what we need. So I want to share the scripture with you. This is a common English Bible, so the um, scripture is going to sound a little bit different. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. Right there is already a promise. He lets me rest in grassy meadows. He leads me to restful waters. He keeps me alive. He guides me in proper paths for the sake of his good name. So he gives us peace and he guides us through the paths that we take, the proper paths. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no danger because you are with me. Again, I promise, God is with us when those times are dark. Your rod and your staff, they protect me. You set a table before me, but a table for me, right in front of my enemies. You bathe me, you bathe my head in oil. My cup is so full that it spills over. Again, he gives us everything that we need in our spirit. It stays alive from believing in that. Yes, goodness and faithful love will pursue me all the days of my life. And I live in the Lord, in the Lord's house, as long as I live. So the, the last two scriptures is exactly what we were talking about. Yes, goodness and faithful love will pursue me all the days of my life. God will pursue us every day of our lives. And I will live in the Lord's house as long as I live. The choice of living in the Lord's house. So, my point through all this is our shepherd is amazing. Our shepherd will take care of us. Our shepherd will never let us be alone. But we have to want to go back to the flock if we ever stray. So when you have five choices and you can fight you can give up, or you can take a leap of faith. I hope and pray that your faith is strong enough to be able to take that leap. Because God will be there for you. Will it be comfortable? Not always. God has a tendency to let us be able to take a leap of faith and land somewhere where we're not comfortable. And that's okay, because we trust him in, in the lead, and he's with us. It's all about trusting your shepherd. It's all about listening to his promises and knowing that he'll always be there for you. The shepherd is diligent. He will pursue you, but it's up to us to follow and trust and keep his vision the same as ours. And that is taking care of the flock, praying for the ones that might be lost, and helping them look and touch lives to hopefully bring them back to the flock. So I hope this week you're standing on the edge of the cliff and you have three choices to make. I hope that you trust God. I hope that you take that leap and do it with him. And trust that he'll be there when you hit the ground. He wants that kind of relationship with us. He wants us to be able to trust him enough to say, jump, I'll catch you. And the next time that you read Psalm 23, don't let your heart get overwhelmed with the sorrow and the darkness of it. Read it with the joy that you know that God is making promises through the scriptures. Amen. If you would join with me in the prayer.